So here we are at uh, United Against Enbridge Pipeline with Grand Chief of Manitoba, Derek Nipponek. Welcome back to Access Television. It's a pleasure to speak with you and follow up on some of our biggest issues, one of them being the fight against Enbridge Pipeline. Today during the speeches, people were talking about how East is meeting West and we are united and there's no way on God's green earth that we can beat, we can be beaten down. So is there anything else you'd like to add uh, to the listeners and to some of the viewers of Access Television? Well, if I can uh, just extend the message once again, the, um, the, uh, the passage of paper from one person to the next, the, uh, the four walls of the courtrooms, they can't contain the spirit and the power of the Indigenous people in these lands. Our strength comes from the land, and no matter how much concrete they pour in the downtown of Vancouver, it's not going to hide the strength and the spirit and the character of the, of the nations and people who call this home and have called this home for thousands of years. So we can go into these courtrooms and we can engage in their processes, but the bottom line is that the consequences of whatever happens in court, they do not accrue to us at a spiritual level. We're strong no matter what, and uh, that's the way it's always going to be. Does the same go for the Bill C-51? I think, I think Bill C-51, once again, it's a, it's a piece of paper. It's meant to instill fear in the hearts of people. A, a fear that, uh, that unfortunately some people use to drive their, their campaigns for re-elections. And you know, the truth is, is that this great, this, this great land was settled by people who were brave, they were warriors, they, were, they stepped up, they sacrificed their lives at time to create a space where we could live together, where we could put the difficult issues on the table, we could talk through them. That's, the, that's not the work of fear-mongering, that's the work of powerful, strong people. That's the, that's the country that was built here, not the C-51. The C-51 bill is not Canadian. It's coming from some kind of fear-based platform that only, that only people who live in fear could actually, could actually support. So do you agree with uh, Grand Chief Sir Philip that, uh, they, that, that they've been getting a, the government of Canada has been getting a free ride for way too long? And how, do we, how do we break that cycle? Well, it's, it's very difficult because there's a very, um, a very strong um, public momentum, a very strong public message that comes out from those who perpetuate propaganda. Okay, but the bottom line is that any of the resources that have come out of the ground, that come from the land, we should be benefiting from those resources. Okay, we should we should have been able to maintain our qualities, our quality of living, our standard of life should have been maintained for all this time. Instead, a few people have converted our resources into wealth for themselves at the price at the price of our people. We're living in poverty all across the territory. And if we had a say in what had happened, okay, and what has happened over the last number of decades, we wouldn't have allowed what happened to happen. We wouldn't have allowed greenhouse gas emissions to do what they've done. We wouldn't have allowed the tar sands to be ripped up and the ground to be ripped up to create a space where nothing can live. We wouldn't have allowed that because we are responsible stewards of the land. So now that we're once again re-emerging, the renewal process is amongst us right now. The strength of the people is coming through. We are we are carving out that space that we need to occupy as original people, and it's. Uh, very powerful. Hey, you brought up the election. Uh, what, about, what about voting? Should First Nations people vote? I mean, Corey Belgar is calling for the vote. Well, we have people like Pam Palmater who are saying we shouldn't be engaging in that. What is your stance? Well, I think that uh, my, my elders have always taught me that if I'm going to delegate my voice to a spokesperson, if I'm supposed to give my sovereignty and delegate my words to somebody else, I have to pass tobacco. That's where, that's where my teachings come from, okay? So my sovereignty is expressed by the passing of tobacco to somebody who I entrust with the responsibility of carrying my message. I haven't done that to any candidates in a, in a, in a Canadian federal election system or a provincial system, okay? I can, I can mark a little pencil mark in a square box to say, hey, you know what? Some of your ideas are okay. You can go to Ottawa and you can, you can speak on some specific issues, but it's not a full delegation of authority. It does not undermine my sovereignty. We're living in a time right now where we're working with the federal government, the success of federal governments that do not know who we are. They don't even, they, they don't know who the who the indigenous people are. They keep us hemmed down under policy, under law, to make sure that we don't show and demonstrate the true power that we have as an expression of our own sovereignty. That's who we're dealing with in Ottawa right now. And if we have an opportunity to cast a ballot and not compromise our sovereignty because we know who we are and where we come from, I think we should do that. We need to get rid of the types of thinking that's in Ottawa right now, which would, which would keep us down, which would uh, cause conflict in our homeland. Thank you very much, Doug.